Good day, students. Welcome to part two of um, linearization and differentials. In this example, we are going to be using linearization to approximate a root. Okay? So let's take a look at the instructions for example one. It says approximate the root using a linearization centered at an appropriate nearby number. For number one, we are going to be considering the cube root of 27.027. Okay? All right. So first of all, let's write down the formula for linearization of a function. Um, a function f of x can be um, approximated using the linearization L of x equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. Now, do you remember what this equation is? In part one, we talked about this. This is the equation of the tangent line at x equals a. Okay? So what function um, are we going to be using here? If we ignore the decimal component, we're going to be looking at the cube root of 27. Okay? So this could be viewed as the x or the variable. So our function f of x is going to be the cube root function. Okay? Cube root of x. So what we are going to do first is find the um, linearization at x equals a, then we'll fix our a value to find the specific um, equation of the tangent line. Okay? So let's say um, at x equals a, f of a is going to be the cube root of a. Okay? Now, in this linearization formula, we need f of a and f prime of a. Okay, so let's see. Um, we now need to find f prime of a. So we know that f prime of a is going to be the cube root of a prime, the derivative of that. To make this easy, we can express this as a power. So we can use the power rule. Okay, so this becomes um, a to the one third prime. So now if we use the power rule here, this is going to become, you bring down the power, one-third a, and subtract one from the power, one-third minus one, is negative two-third. And this can be written as, uh, this can be written as one over three, using the reciprocal property of exponents, this entire third term can be reciprocated, and then if we use the rational exponents property, um, this can be written as the cube root of a raised to the second power, okay? So this pieces of information, f of a and f prime of a can be used to find the linearization at any um, x value for this cube root, cube root function. So now, what if we want to fix it to um, a equals 27? So at a equals 27, we want to find the linearization at this specific a value. Uh, what is that going to look like? So we have to first of all find f of a. In this case, f of a is going to be um, f of 27. So we're going to evaluate the cube root at a equals 20, x equals 27 or a equals 27, same thing. So the cube root of 27 equals 3, okay? So that's f of a or y1. And then f prime of a is the slope of the tangent line. In this case, we, are want, we want to find the slope at a equals 27. So f prime of 27 is what we get when we input 27 into this derivative function right here. So that becomes 1 over 3 times the cube root of 27, that raised to the second power. So let's simplify this. We have 1 over 3. The cube root of 27 is 3 squared as 9. 
and that tells us that um, the f prime of a or the slope of our tangent line is 1 over 27. Now we have all the information we need to write the equation of the tangent line or the linearization of our function. So L of x is going to be equal to f of a, which is 3, plus f prime of a, which is 1 over 27, times x minus 27. Okay, let's uh, simplify this further. This becomes um, 1 over 27x minus, if you multiply these two, you get minus 1 plus 3. Okay, so linearization in simplified form is 1 over 27x plus 2. Now, what we're going to do next is we want to use this linearization to find the cube root of 27 at a closed value, namely 0 0.027. Okay, so we want to find the linearization at 27.027. So this will be equal to 1 over 27. Now we, our input is 27.027. So 27.027 plus 2. Okay. Now let's do this by hand. Uh, you can do this with your calculator if you want, but let's do this by hand. So we can write this as 1 over 27 times 27 plus. Now 0 0.027 um, written in fraction form. We're going to have one, two, three, three zeros underneath um, the number under. So we have 27 over 1 and three zeros, 1,000. Okay, plus 2. Because uh, 27 over 1,000 is 0 0.027. All right, so what I'm simply going to do here is distribute this 1 over 27 to the integer and the fractional component of our, of our input value. So that um, yields um, 1 over 27 times 27 plus 1 over 27 times 27 over 1,000. And then whatever result we get here, we're going to add 2. Okay? So you can see this is simply, in the page, this is simply 1 plus this 27 goes here 1, this 27 goes here 1, 1 over 1,000. And then just add 2. And then we can see that our final answer is um, 3 and 1 over 1,000. Okay? So what does this mean? It means that um, f of 27.027, which is basically the cube root of 27.027, can be approximated with the linearization of the function at 27.027, which is equal to 3, 1 over 1,000. All right, so there goes our final answer. Let's box that. That's our answer right here. Now let's take a look at number 2. So for number 2, we are to find dy and then evaluate its value using the given dx and x values. So for number two, we're considering the function y equals 3 e to the x sine x. Okay, this is the uh, function under consideration. Okay, so before we go ahead and find dy, let's uh, quickly go over the steps on the side real quick. Steps to find dy. It's pretty straightforward. If you know how to differentiate, then you should be able to find dy without any um, difficulty, okay? So step number one is you simply find the derivative using this notation, dy dx. And then part two, you isolate, isolate dy. How do you actually do y? You just basically multiply both sides by dx, and that uh, will yield dy on the left side. 
All right, so first thing we are going to do is find the derivative of this function using the dy dx um, notation. So on the left side, dy dx equals, now if we're differentiating this function on the right, we are going to um, be using the product rule. Remember what the product rule is. Um, the product rule, let's say we have uv, uv prime is uh, v u prime plus u v prime. Okay, so let's do that here. We have two functions. Let me separate them for you so you can see what I'm doing. So I want to call these two, three e to the x, my u, and then um, I'm going to call sine x my v. Okay, so this is v. All right, so v u prime is going to be sine x times the derivative v dx of 3 u to the x, that's um, v u prime, plus u, which is 3 e to the x, times the derivative of v v prime, which is v dx of sine x. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and evaluate this. We have dy dx. We're still on step number one. dy dx equals sine x times you factor out the 3, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x plus 3e e to the x, derivative of sine is cosine x. All right? So there is dy dx. Let's write it nicely. dy dx equals 3e e to the x plus, um, I'm sorry, let's fix that, 3e e to the x sine x plus 3e e to the x cosine x. All right, now that's step one, find dy dx. Now to find dy, the differential dy, we are to isolate dy by multiplying both sides of our equation by dx. Okay, so let's multiply both sides of our equation by dx. So if we do that, um, dx there, multiply this by dx, we're going to have our first result, the differential dy, is equal to 3 e to the x sine x plus 3 e to the x cosine x this entire expression multiplied by dx okay so this is <coughs> this is the differential right here differential differential all right now the second part part b here part b we are to find find dy where x equals pi and dx equals 0 0.1 Okay, now let's go ahead and do it. It's still for the same problem. So let's go ahead and um, evaluate the value of our differential for the specified x and the x value. Okay, all right. So this is a simple substitution problem. We're just going to substitute the results we got into our answer in the first part and uh, simplify it. And that will be that. Okay, all right. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. We're going to have uh, dy equals, now let's uh, put our previous answer in view so we can substitute without making mistakes, 3e e, uh, to the x, x is pi, so 3e e to the pi, sine pi, plus 3e e to the pi, cosine pi, uh, this entire expression multiplied by dx, which is 0 0.1. Okay, now um, let's simplify this. We know that sine pi is zero. So since sine pi is zero, this entire term goes to zero. And we're going to have three e to the pi cosine using the cosine curve, cosine pi is negative one times negative one. And if we multiply, if we express 0 0.1 as a fraction, is one over 10, okay? 
All right, let's uh, simplify this. This entire thing becomes negative uh, three e to the pi over 10. Okay, so that's the final answer, dy equals negative three e to the pi divided by 10. So that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking here so you can get other cool math clips such as this. And uh, please post a comment to let me know what you think. Uh, you can give me a thumbs up or like this video if you liked it. I appreciate it. And feel free to share it with your friends. More clips can be found on mathgotserve.com calculus. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.